So the nucleus, this is this is a from your packet. This has nucleus. It's RNA polymerase. You cut a, a slot where it says slot. You'll notice it says the beginning of the hemoglobin gene. You only need one of these. You don't need to cut them all, all, all of them out. Only one of them. Try to make it relatively thin, very close to the, so, so it can fit through the slot or make the slot long. It doesn't matter. Obviously, the DNA is going to be work is in the nucleus. It doesn't leave the nucleus, and it works with RNA polymerase. So the DNA is going to go here, like so. The beginning of the hemoglobin gene. These are a bunch of RNAs. You need to cut them up. You only really need one of these, one row, maybe two. Pretty sure you only need one. You have to see. If you need more than one, just cut some more out. I would try to cut out all the extras, all the extra bits here. And then cut along the dotted line. If you want to, you can go ahead and color them, make them look nice, whatever you'd like. Now these RNAs are floating around in the nucleus and you have the RNA polymerase, which is represented by this, represented by, where is it? Jeez. Represented here by this area. So you slide the DNA through the, the slot and you match the C. It's going to be matched with a what? It's going to match with a G. And then the G is going to match with what? A U. Then you take the G and the U and you tape them together because that's what happens when you're making RNA. You make start making bonds between the RNA molecule, the RNA nucleotides. So that's that represents your covalent bond. Now this slides over. Now you have a C, which you're going to put. Go ahead and put a G. Again, you make another bond. Slide it over. G is going to match, match up with a C. Oh. Great. Just dropped it, so I'm going to go ahead and cut another one out. The G is going to match up with a C. Again, notice I have the tape already cut in little strips off to the side so that I can tape it up when I need to. So, next one is a T, it matches up with an A. A gets matched with a U, not a T, because there's no T in RNA. And the G gets matched with a C. So it looks like you need more than one row anyways. A with a U. I just cut these shorter so that they kind of match up. I'm doing this quickly. You can do it neater. If you don't have time, you can do it just as quickly as I do. So again, we're doing transcription here. We're making mRNA. Move it over. The C then goes with a G. Over and over again, you do the process of transcription. This is what happens inside the RNA polymerase. It just creates an environment that allows you to put one nucleotide after another together in a polymer. So DNA stays. This is the first part, the beginning of the hemoglobin gene. 
you have another sheet here, a couple other sheets. This is obviously a ribosome. We'll get back to that later since the ribosome is in the cytoplasm and so far in the process we're still in the nucleus. Here is, here are your amino acids and your tRNAs. We'll get to that later since we're in the cytoplasm. This is the second half of your mRNA. They did you a favor and they decided to put these together with you. So you take and make sure this is thin because you have to decide it through a slot again. It doesn't have to be too thin, but it has to be relatively thin. And you take and you add it to your second, your first part of the mRNA so that you can make it longer. They just did you a favor and connected the two so that you wouldn't have to do that process repeatedly for the whole length of the mRNA. That's all. So that's your mRNA. And again, I just want to make it thin so that it fits to the slot. So I'm going to get rid of the excess here. The key is that, that you get the idea that, you're, that transcription is making an mRNA from DNA. And then that mRNA is a polymer of ribonucleic acids. All right. So now you have the mRNA. Of course, it would, the spliceosome would cut out the, the introns stick the exons together, add a poly A tail, all that would happen. But now this leaves the nucleus, right? And so this nuclear part, the gene part stays in the nucleus. Next thing is, is you have to go out into the cytoplasm. So now we're in the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, you're gonna find ribosomes either in the rough ER or in the uh, floating in the cytoplasm. And of course you need a slot. You need to cut a slot because that's where you're gonna stick your mRNA into the ribosome. Remember the, ribos the actual ribosome has two subunits, a big and a small, it has some protein, but mostly it's, R it's made of RNA. Now you need a tRNA with an amino acid. So you have to make those tRNAs. So you have to find your tRNAs and your amino acids, which are right here. There are your amino acids. You have to cut these out. Do not tape these together until you're actually making the covalent bonds. So you take the valine, or the uh, amino acids, the amino acids are not floating around randomly in, this, in the cytoplasm. They're attached to a tRNA. They're temporarily attached. So don't, they're t they're, when I say temporarily attached, it means you're gonna transfer these over to, the rib the, to each other. You're gonna start sticking these together in the ribosome. So logistically, the logistically, you cannot tape these to onto the amino acid portion here because if you do, it's going to be very hard for you to tape them together and to remove them from the amino acid. This tape is tough. So in the cell, of course, this is all a chemical reaction, so it's not a big deal. So you cut these out. You see that they have little lines for you, guides. There's a guide there, you see that little line. That's because you have to cut it down the middle. And of course, you have more lines here. These are your amino acids. I would do it the way I'm doing it here and line them all up. Again, I'm trimming off the excess just so it fits nicely together. If you didn't do this, you'd still, you could still get them right. The question's right. 
can't line them up. Unfortunately, they don't line up because I didn't cut them straight. So you want to cut them here so that you keep the anticodon. These are the anticodons that go along with the amino acid. This is the anticodon. Now it says amino acid. It doesn't say the actual amino acid. That's because the activity has, is going to require you to look up your own amino acid. You have to look it up. Now, you, when you look it up, you have to use the codon, not the anticodon. If you try to use the anticodon, you're not going to be able to get the right sequence. You'll get, the, you'll get a, a, a sequence that does not, that is incorrect. It is incorrect. So you have to use the codon to do this. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Here's, here's the anticodon. This is the tRNA. It doesn't look like this, but this represents the tRNA. It has UGA. Well, to look this up, you need the you need to have your you need your codon chart. So now this is the ribosome. In the ribosome is happening in the cytoplasm or in the uh, rough ER. The mRNA, which is this, right, is going to come along, slip in here. The MR, I see. I it's a little bit too wide for the hole. But it doesn't matter. mRNA is going to come along, and notice it's going to read it in three codes. One, two, three, and three codon. Uh, codon sets at three, right? Nucleotides, three nucleotides make it codon. One, two, three, one, two, three. This is the codon. It's on the mRNA. This is the anticodon. It's on the tRNA. So what anticodon would match the codon GUG, it would have to be a C, A, C. So here there has to be something that's C, A, C. C, A, C. And here it is. Now I'm going to go, this is the anticodon that matches it. But which amino acid would go with that anticodon? Well, you have to look up GUG because GUG is the codon. So when we look up GUG, first G, second G, 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 I'm sorry, G, U is the second letters of U, and then G, it's valine, V-A-L. So now I have to find valine in my amino acids, and here it is. And I put it here. I do not tape it. I do not tape it because the valine is only temporarily bonded to that tRNA. Next to it, so here's a, here's a codon CAU. Well, what anticodon is going to match CAU? It's going to be G U. A. So now we come over here and we try to find GUA. No, 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 no. There's GUA. That would match CAU. G, C goes with G, A with U, U with A. Now what amino acid goes on, on this tRNA? It's the one that would match up on this codon chart to CAU. If I go to C and then to A, C and A, and then U, C, A, U, is histine, histidine. So I take histidine and I put it where it goes. Now, I want to emphasize that this charging of the tRNA, this, the tRNA collecting its amino acid happens outside the ribosome. The tRNA brings this couple from outside the ribosome over to the ribosome and they land. They match because of the mRNA. Now when they're next to each other in the mRNA, they get bonded together. The tRNAs go about their business to go collect more amino acids. And of course they get more, three more nucleotides come along. Hold on a second. I, I needed to make this long is what needs to happen. But. You guys can do it neater. I'm rushing through this. There, there's three. Then there's th now this moves over. This is connected. Actually, this one's still C C G U, right? C G U. No, I'm sorry. G 
G U A G U A or G U A. Here it is. This stays here, right? The other tyranny already went to go get another amino acid, but now you have another three to match up. Notice that these are still kind of stuck together here. That tRNA already went, but the valine is now stuck to the histidine. You have CUG. CUG is going to have GAC. So I find GAC. There it is. Again, it would already have picked up its amino acid, but CUG or CUG, which is the codon. I look it up here again. C U G. C-U-G is leucine. So I find the amino acid leucine. If I can find leucine. In the amino acids that I cut up, there it is. And I place it and it brings, the tRNA brings it over, matches up. In the ribosome, the ribosome acts as an enzyme and catalyzes the reaction that would allow for these two to bond together. The tRNA gets moved, this tRNA gets kicked off, this moves over, and it keeps happening, and this, this amino acid chain gets longer and longer. That's what you have to do. That's what this process is about.